Hi, I'm astronomer and author Jeffrey Bennett, and I've created this two-part video about the science of eclipses for the free Totality app. In this part one video, we'll explore the various types of eclipse. Then, in part two, we'll explore when and why eclipses occur. There are two basic types of eclipse. A lunar eclipse occurs when Earth comes between the moon and the sun, so that Earth's shadow falls on the moon. And a solar eclipse occurs when the moon comes between Earth and the sun, so that the moon's shadow falls on Earth. This means that a lunar eclipse can occur only when the moon is full, and a solar eclipse can happen only at new moon. To be sure you understand the reason, let's briefly review why we see phases of the moon. An easy way to understand moon phases is to take a ball outside on a sunny day, Pretend the ball is the moon and your head is the earth, and move your moon ball around you like the real moon orbits earth. This painting shows the ball, or moon, as it would appear in eight different positions as it moves around you. Notice that no matter where the moon is located, the half facing the sun is sunlit while the other half is dark. However, from your viewpoint in the middle, you'll see different portions of the sunlit and dark halves at different positions. That is why we see phases of the moon. For example, when the moon is here, only the dark half faces toward us, and we cannot see it at all because it is located in the same general direction in the sky as the sun. We call this a new moon, a name that comes from ancient beliefs that the moon was being remade at this time. When the moon is here, the side that faces us is half sunlit and half dark. We therefore see what looks like a half moon, but this phase is officially called first quarter because we see it when the moon is one quarter of the way through its cycle. You can understand all the phases the same way, but the other key phase for eclipses is full moon, which we see when the moon is on the side of Earth opposite the sun. It's also worth noting that the moon's full cycle of phases, from new to full and back again, takes about 29 and a half days, which is the origin of the time period we call a month, which would be better called a month. We now switch to a view looking down on the moon's orbit around Earth, showing the full shadows that each world casts into space. Notice that the moon's shadow can touch Earth only when it is here, at the new moon position. In other words, a solar eclipse can occur only at new moon. Resuming the animation, we see that Earth's shadow can fall on the moon, creating a lunar eclipse only here when it is full moon. In fact, these diagrams might make you wonder why we don't have eclipses at every new and full moon. The answer, which we'll discuss in part two of this video set, is that the moon's orbit is slightly tilted to Earth's orbit in a way that is not shown in these diagrams. To understand what we actually see during eclipses, it helps to visualize the three-dimensional shadow of a world like Earth or the Moon falling on a giant screen behind it. This diagram shows the shadow geometry, with the lines showing where light from opposite edges of the Sun would fall. Notice that the shadow has two distinct regions. The smaller central shadow, called the full shadow, or umbra, is the region in which light from the Sun is completely blocked. Surrounding the full shadow is a larger partial shadow, or penumbra, in which light from only part of the sun is blocked. This idea explains why lunar eclipses come in three types. We see a total lunar eclipse when the moon is within Earth's full shadow. No direct sunlight falls on the moon at this time, but the moon takes on a red tinge because it is slightly illuminated by the glow of all the sunrises and sunsets that ring our planet as seen from the moon at that time. We see a partial lunar eclipse when the moon is partly in the full shadow and partly in the partial shadow. Notice the curvature of Earth's shadow on the moon, which provides clear evidence that our world is round. The third type of lunar eclipse, called a penumbral lunar eclipse, occurs when the moon is only within Earth's partial shadow, or penumbra. The darkening of the moon during a penumbral eclipse is barely noticeable to the eye. Some lunar eclipses are only partial or penumbral, but total eclipses must also begin and end with partial stages. This series of photos shows Earth's shadow gradually covering more and more of the Moon during a total lunar eclipse. Let's return to the two basic types of eclipse. Much as a total lunar eclipse occurs when the Moon is in Earth's full shadow, a total solar eclipse occurs when Earth is touched by the Moon's full shadow. However, because the Moon is much smaller than Earth, its shadow is also small compared to Earth. This explains the variations we see among solar eclipses. 
You can see a total solar eclipse only if you are within the small total shadow, while the larger surrounding region will be in the partial shadow and therefore will have a partial solar eclipse. Moreover, the Moon's motion along its orbit causes its shadow to move from west to east across our planet, as shown here for the 2017 total solar eclipse. The central black dot represents the total shadow in which totality is occurring, while the surrounding regions are in partial eclipse, with less of the Sun blocked as you move farther from the total shadow. This explains the sequence you see in composite photos taken along the path of totality like this one. The eclipse begins as the Moon's partial shadow appears at your location, gradually blocking more and more of the Sun until totality, after which the Sun reappears as the shadow continues to travel along the path. The small size of the Moon's shadow can also lead to a third type of solar eclipse. If a solar eclipse occurs at a time when the Moon is relatively far from Earth in its orbit, the full shadow may not even reach Earth. In that case, the Moon will appear too small to fully block the Sun, and the region directly behind the full shadow will have what we call an annular eclipse, in which a ring of sunlight, sometimes called a ring of fire, will remain visible around the Moon. Again, people in the surrounding partial shadow will see a partial solar eclipse. Returning to our two basic eclipse types, let's close by discussing why you have many more chances to see a total lunar eclipse than a total solar eclipse. Both types actually occur about equally often, but the fact that Earth's shadow covers the entire Moon means that anyone on Earth's night side can watch any total lunar eclipse. In other words, about half the planet can see a lunar eclipse at the same time. In contrast, you can only see a total solar eclipse if you are somewhere along the narrow path of totality, and on average, a given location will have a total solar eclipse only about once every 375 years, though there is great variation from place to place. For example, this map shows the paths of the total solar eclipses of 2017 and 2024. Notice that this small region south of St. Louis is on both paths, giving it two total solar eclipses in just seven years. Meanwhile, Los Angeles last had a total solar eclipse in 1724 and will not have another until the year 3290. To find your best opportunity to experience a total solar eclipse, be sure you are using the Totality app created by Big Kid Science and brought to you by the American Astronomical Society. Now I hope you'll continue on to part two of this video, which you'll find after you start the app by selecting the main menu, then tapping Learn, and selecting Understanding Eclipses. You can also find the video on the web at the link on the screen.